Arab Tov, covering my name, Stephen Benin. You're watching Israeli News Live, and if it can't get worse, it just seems to get worse and worse in Syria tonight. Uh, the bombs have not stopped falling from the Turkish uh, onslaught. The ground invasion has already begun. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, you have to ask yourself the question, how could the Turkish military be so well prepared to launch an invasion into Syria and to attack the Kurds on the northern border of Syria there? Now, there are some that even actually have the audacity to write to say, well, they're not really attacking uh, the Kurds, but rather the terrorist PKK group inside of uh, that is hiding inside of Syria. Hmm. I, I don't even know how to even justify that with words. And now President Trump, uh, Business Insider, reporting his latest response. And of course, the Business Insider, just one of many. Uh, President Trump uh, continued to defend his decision to withdraw U.S. troops from northeastern Syria, abandon Kur Kurdish forces in the region by saying the Kurds did not help us uh, help the U.S. during World War II. Uh, were the Kurds a nation in World War II to begin with? Are they even a nation now? No, but one thing's for sure, they have been busy trying to help the United States uh, in its own fight in the Middle East, but abandoned by every nation, whether it be Russia or the President of the United States. And it's not just been Trump, it's been other leaders in the United States since then that have done so, uh, but this is the most blatant. And of course, as they state in here, moving forces out of northeastern Syria. That's exactly right. Because President Trump did not move troops out of Syria as some people are running around all excited and saying, well, he's only trying to keep his campaign promises. Well, isn't it kind of interesting that keeping the campaign promises only seems to happen at a time where, oh, wow, the election is coming up. Got to make some points out there. I promise the voters we're bringing our guys home. Well, no, he's not bringing your guys home. Uh, he only moved them off the northern border so the Turkish military could attack. And this is a very well-orchestrated attack. Uh, I've got some more interesting uh, uh, intelligence report to share with you on this, what really is going on. The picture, I think, says it all right here. This is from Esquire. Everything you knew was going to happen is happening in northern Syria. Everything the president should have known was going to happen, or at the very least vaguely care about happening had be had he had a shred of either intellect or humanity, is happening. Turkey is blowing the H-E-double-L out of it. The Russians are cheering. The Iranians are thrilled. And the Kurds, sold out by another American president, are running for cover. Uh, this is according to the New York Times. And I think the picture does say it all. It is a smoking furnace there, and the Kurds are being slaughtered as the Turkish militia move into the area there. Uh, the message I got here, I actually got two different messages today. The American forces were transferred to other locations. The presence in other parts of Syria uh, continues. The bulk of the force were transferred to, uh, transferred to Iraq. This was a gift from above for al-Nusra's front. It operates now under a different name called ISIL. Uh, as for the news of the battlefield, Turkish Air Force have concentrated its attacks on seven locations inside of Syria. The sorties are coming mainly from the 8th base of the Turkish Air Force in De, uh, Deyarbakir. Uh, the attacks have been focused on the supply depot lines on the YPG, including their food and ammunition. Places attack include Rasa Al Ain uh, Mushrafa and Ain Isa. There has been casualties of 30 dead, injured. Kurds have uh, retaliated by setting fields, oil fields, and uh, Hask on fire and attacking Turkish cities close to the Syrian border by mortars. Uh, and that's what we're getting right there. Now we do have some more on a second intel, but just to confirm. What our Middle East uh, uh, source has to say on the issues that are happening over there now, Tulsi Gabbard, in a, an interesting release here, uh, made a very clear statement. I want to play Donald this for Trump you now. Donald Trump is not removing our troops from Syria. He's just moving them from the northern Syrian border, allowing Turkey to invade Syria and slaughter the Kurds. He lied to the Kurds, promising them our support while simultaneously preventing them from reconciling with the Syrian government and coordinating a common defense against the Turkish invasion. 
So basically, in short, the impending slaughter and ethnic cleansing of the Kurds in northern Syria by Turkey is happening because Trump refuses to end our efforts to overthrow the Syrian government. The Kurds are just another casualty of this regime change war, which is supported by warmongering Republicans. Don't really need to go into everything that Tulsi has to say on this here. But I think the main point that I wanted for you to be able to focus on here is as Tulsi does confirm as my own sources were saying, because this was my question to my Middle Eastern uh, correspondent there, is that I wanted to know whether or not uh, the U.S. forces were being moved completely out of Syria or was it just northern Syria? And of course, those forces, some of those were actually uh, relocated with inside of Syria, such as Deir Azor region and down on the southern border there of Syria, but the bulk of those forces were actually taken uh, back, uh, of course, as we mentioned there just a moment ago there, uh, about uh, being taken to the, uh, the Iraqi side of the border there. Uh, also, I was told that ISIL, ISIL is already making a comeback. Last night at Slipper, Sleeper cells attacked a post belonging to the Syrian Defense Forces and killed and injured over 20 of the SDF fighters stationed there. It is only a question of days before they start their attacks for the purpose of freeing their captured members. And he also goes on to mention here Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi in, in his last message. Now that message, friends, and I'll share that with you once again, uh, that was a recorded message. This came out on, uh, it was actually published here September 16th. We were able to tell you by our intelligence sources there, I don't even know, what, three, four weeks before it even was released, that al-Baghdadi was going to be releasing this statement. Uh, and, of course, he did. He noted on here, he said in his last message, if he knew about then the upcoming Turkish invasion, because why? If you listen to the recorded statement, he spent half the time of the message asking the remnants of ISIS or ISIL units to attack and free the captured fighters and their families. Their number is in the thousands, and if they come free, or shall we say, if they come free, excuse me, or, or when they uh, come free, you will see the rebirth of ISIL or ISIS there in the region. And this is something uh, that is definitely wanted by the United States. It's wanted by uh, Israelis because the ISIL fighters are the ones that, have, that were the greatest force in toppling uh, the Syrian government, President Bashar al-Assad, which I do want to make that correction. I put a boss in my title. I couldn't even believe I actually did that earlier today. My brain must have just really been off in la-la land. But at any rate there, uh, President Bashar al-Assad, the overthrowing of the nation. And don't kid yourself, President Bashar al-Assad, you have no idea. Putin is playing you as well. Maybe you know it. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you're part of it. I don't know. I hope not. Uh, but anyway, Putin is very much involved in that. In fact, I need to thank Sister Rosa. She shared with me a video earlier today. Uh, Rabbi explains shocking history of Putin, the KGB, the Chabad, and the Mossad, how they're working together. That video there will send your head for a tailspin, sure enough. Uh, but at any rate, you know, the, 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 the evils continue on. This also I picked up here. Turkey, they're uh, steadily digging into the pipelines there and stealing all the Syrian oil for whatever purposes they might have need of, uh, as the video here clearly shows as well. Siphoning off those uh, nice old uh, oil and gas lines. This one here being an oil line here that's pumping the oil to a different place and, and being tapped and stolen the oil for their vehicles or whatever they may need them for there. Uh, I just find it interesting just how much evil goes on. And of course, Syria, the Syrian people are the ones that are basically really paying for all uh, the, this criminal activity. Also, as, uh, our intelligence report was shared, it was shared with us there about the Kurdish, uh, the ISIL fighters trying to get free. They also had on the Telegraph, Kurdish forces put down a riot by ISIL prisoners in Syria, uh, said there Kurdish forces have qu uh, quashed a riot at a prison believed to be holding British Islamic uh, State uh, ISIL suspects in northern Syria, according to the U.S.-led US coalition. Jihadist detainees and Derek prisoners near the Iraqi border attacked their guards and attempted to break out of the compound. Now, if you notice that, 
they were holding British ISIL members, suspects there. Uh, wow. Seems like we've heard this before too, haven't we? That the British uh, are helping uh, to the ISIS fighters there. And of course, the gas attacks that were done on civilian populations in Syria. Uh, all these types of evils that are going on. It just never seems to end. Hmm. Anyway, looks like ISIS is going to regain its, its strength. It's going to get back in power there. And uh, we're going to see another devastating blow to the Syrian people. You, you would really think that the end would come for these poor people there. They have really undergone a lot. But the whole point at the end of the day is President Trump clearly knew what he was doing. He knew what he was doing. And how we can sit there and put our heads in the, in, in the sand and ignore this is beyond me. Um, I, I, I just don't, I don't get it. I really don't. But anyway, I know there's different people. I, and I'll tell you something. The people that love Trump, well, you want to talk about some diehard fans out there. I have been cussed up and down by Christians. People are supposed to be Christians anyway, cussing me using the worst foul language you ever heard of uh, because I dare even bring out anything negative on President Trump. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. I guess when you see the rest of the evidence, I guess that'll be manufactured too. You know, I'll tell you something straight up. I don't care. Republicans or Democrats. They're all crooks. I've seen that firsthand. I've seen Bush protect Democrats like crazy that were a bunch of money laundering, dope peddling uh, uh, criminals in order to support the little terrorist uh, battles that were going on in Nicaragua at the time. And, uh, and of course, it's not just support that, but it's also to line their pockets as well. Yeah, a lot of that goes on. It still goes on. They just get a little smarter about it. It's coming. The report's coming. I'm Steve Benin. You're watching Israeli News Live, Arab Talk.